Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over some CSS box properties. So I want to work with different kinds of boxes. And there are block elements, and those are the ones you can think of as boxes. A block element separates itself from surrounding content with a line space. And a block element also takes up the full width available to it. So I've got this page set up here. It's a blank page, doc type HTML for HTML5. Um, got a title in the head section, character encoding car set. Uh, I'm going to do some internal styles. Currently, I don't have anything, and my web page is blank. There's nothing in the body section, so there's nothing to see on the web page. In fact, if I go and run this, launch it in Firefox, you can see there's my there's my page. Let me resize this a bit so we can kind of see the whole browser window, though. Okay, so that's my web page. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a box on here, and the first box I'm going to put on is a headline one, and I'll just put in working with boxes okay. and so that we can see this headline one I'm gonna jump over to my internal styles and I'll put in a selector for h1 and I'm gonna get a background color oops uh, kind of a darkish medium blue and I'll do a foreground color that is um, very light gray Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that, jump back over to my browser and refresh. There we go. So, uh, heading one is a block element. And, as we can see, it also creates a box. And this is where we can start to experiment with some of the box properties. Now, something else I'm going to do so this really exaggerates things is I'm going to put in what's called a CSS reset rule. Okay, a reset rule will kind of set the margins and padding of all elements to zero and that puts everything on an equal playing field so I'm going to use a asterisk as my selector it's a wildcard selector and I'm going to do margin 0 px padding 0 px there we go and normally this is the very first rule I use in every CSS file or internal CSS normally it's an external CSS file though this puts everything on an equal playing field and just putting in this little reset rule is one of the best tools to making your sites look consistent on all the top browsers okay because it starts you off at an, you know on level ground so to speak if you did a google search for a reset rule you would come across eric meyer who was a css guru and author you'd come across his website where he talks about reset rules in more in more detail and has uh, examples of even longer and more complicated css rules but i find this simple one works very very well so, and once I've made that little change and I refresh, now you can see that my page has no margin and this H1 has no margin. And I wanted to do that to emphasize the margin and padding that I'm about to apply. Okay, now there are two things that you might control with a particular box, and that is its margin and its padding. The margin is outside of the border, the padding is on the inside of the border. Margin is outside of the box, padding is inside of the box. So if I go over to my H1 here and I put in padding colon, let's say 50 pixels, this is going to ensure that I have 50 pixels of padding around all four sides on the inside of the box. Padding is on the inside. And when you use one unit, unit of measurement like this, it's all four sides. If you use two units of measurement, um, something like this, the first unit is top and bottom, and the second unit is uh, left and right. Okay. If you use three units of measurement, something like this, okay, the first one is the top, the middle one is the left and the right, and the last one is the bottom. So that's kind of weird. I don't usually use that one. But then you can also do four units of measurement. Okay. So if you have four units of measurement, it goes clockwise, top, right, bottom, left, okay? Could be a little bit more than you wanted to know, so I'm just going to go right on back to 50 pixels all four sides. Let me save this back to my browser. Now when I refresh, check this out, you're going to see a lot of space appear around the text but inside of the blue box. There we go. So I now have padding on this block element, this blue box, which is a headline one. So that's padding. Now let's compare that with margin. So if I jump back over here, now I put in some margin. 
of 20 pixels. Save that, back over to the browser. When I refresh, you're gonna see space on the outside of the blue box. There we go. So there's my margin, and I also have padding. So I've applied margin and padding to this particular element. Now, I'm gonna put another element on here. This one's gonna be div ID equals content one. This is some content div. So now I have a div after my heading one. Div is another box or block element. And basically I now have two block elements on my page so that we can see this div content one. So I've got an ID selector here. I'm actually identifying the element in question. This is not necessary. If I just had pound sign content one, that would work fine. Sometimes I like to do this though to remind myself what is content one controlling. It's controlling a particular div. So div ID content one. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a background color of a red and I'll do another um, gray foreground color. So I'm going to go ahead and save that back over to the browser and refresh and like before here we go. Now all of my block elements have zero pixels of margin and padding until told otherwise. Style sheets like HTML like JavaScript is read top to bottom. So the first thing that happens is all elements give zero margin and zero padding. But then I get to my headline one and I'm overriding that zero. So I got a little S in there. I'm overriding that zero. My headline one now has 50 pixels of padding and 20 pixels of margin. However, my content one has not been overridden. It still has zero margin and zero padding. Well, why is there space above my content one? There's technically no margin on my content one. That space is caused by the bottom margin of my headline. So my headline has the margin, my content one does not. If I were to put some margin, in fact I can do it this way, I could just do margin top, and I'm going to do 100 pixels. So I'm going to put 100 pixels of margin on top of my content one, and you'll just see more space appear in between these two boxes. There we go. So now I've got more margin. And let me go ahead and take care of this. I'm going to set the width of my content one to about um, 500 pixels. And I'm going to do margin. I'll do margin right auto and margin left auto. Okay, so what this is going to do by setting the width of my content one to 500 pixels, it's going to be narrower than my browser window. By using auto margins on the left and right, it's going to center, or it's going to, you know, it's going to center this div, this content one on my page. So when I refresh, this is now how it looks. Okay, let's do a couple more experiments here. I'm going to jump back over to my editor, and in addition to having a content one, let me just put a little space there so we can see it. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to make another content. This is going to be content two. So I'm going to have content one and content two. I'm going to jump back over to content one. I'm going to get rid of the margin. I'm going to leave the width. And I'm going to get rid of margin right and margin left. Okay. So I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to copy this. and paste, but this is going to be content two, and I'll change this color over to a green. So now, so now I've got two divs on here. They're both going to be as wide as possible, so as wide as the browser window. They have different background colors. They're both 500 pixels wide. There we go. And since they have no margin, they're right up next to each other. 